Hey, it's Jim, your humble host from Divergerac Designs. Today we're going to show you how to build this flyleaf table. This is part two. We're going to go over everything, so let's get started. Now I'm going to show you what the leaves look like now that the glass is dry and how we did the structure to hold it together. So if you'll notice on the edges here, the teak, we have a small piece of bioxyl cloth, thin layer. In the center we have two layers of bioxyl cloth. We go back to the multiply, another layer of bioxyl cloth, and then the teak. So that's what it looks like now that it's been out of the packaging, out of the wrap and cut up. Now we come over to the main table that's in the center. They did something slightly different. The bigger piece and it was giving me a lot of, a little bit of warpage, I wouldn't say a lot, between the glass and the multiply and everything. So what I did is I made a bunch of slots about an inch and a half apart, rebent it, put West System in with Cabasil into all the slots. Then we did two layers of bioxyl cloth. Now, the situation I'm at is obviously we need hinge pockets, solid material for the hinge screws to go into. We got the hydraulic mounts, so we'll have solid material to screw them into. And then the catches that are gonna be on the bottom side of the table. Now what we have to do is make a pattern. Okay, the last piece is put together for the template. And if you'll notice this template is shaped around everything. So it makes it a real easy deal to be able to cut plastic core that's going in there. And this is kind of the way we do it. This will be a lot of math, a lot of figuring. Just make a simple template. So I just pull it up now and take it over to the bench and cut the plastic core out. Let me do that and we'll be right back. And the plastic core is cut out. Let's see how it fits. Really didn't have to label it because if you see all my little pencil marks from tracing out the template, that actually tells me the top was. So now that that fits, all I have to do is West System the bioxyl cloth that's underneath here. Stick this down, put some weights on top of it so it's really flat. It'll be ready to run through the thickness sander and take all the shim off. And then we can bioxyl and put the back side of the table on. But let me glue this down. Once it's glued down, we'll come back and show you how it looks. All right, so saw so me gluing the honeycomb down or the plastic core or nida core, whatever you'd like to call it. So then we ran it through the thickness sander and we got it down to the thickness that we needed. But you can see what I was talking about, it took all the mesh off, so it left it open grain. On here I have the fiberglass down. It's on a piece of um, scrimshaw mica, so it's been sanded on both sides. What will happen is the glass will go right inside there show you what I'm talking about. This is the mesh side that got laid down on the table. Then I sanded that mesh off and I actually bioxyl clothed it to a piece of plywood in order to be able to determine the structural strength and how strong that was going to stay on there. So you can see it's on really well. It's not coming off. So this is going to actually will end up having the same thing happen when I put this panel on here. An expensive table or something you really spend some time building. Do a little sample, make sure it works before you actually do the whole process. So now this just basically is going to be laid on top of here. This will give us the bottom of the table. It'll be another layer of bioxyl. And this panel came out really smooth. Set it on and we'll be done. Oh, and when you forget to wear your apron, something always gets on your shirts. So that's it. Now it's just uh, basically, I just weighed it up, set it down. You can kind of see that I left it oversized. The glass, mica, everything's oversized. It's easy to trim off after. Get this weighted and the table will be ready for moldings. The bird's rack. Yeah, Coop, how's it going? Oh, really? Um, yeah, I'd love to help you with that, but we'll have to wait until we're done working on this table. Yeah, of course the dogs are ready. They're always ready. All right, I'll get back in touch with you, thanks. So I'm laid up this panel last night. I trimmed all of the excess for mica bioxyl cloth off the edge. So after I trimmed it, I measured it. Kind of wanted to show you something. All right, so that measurement is 1,422 thousandths. Move it over to this other spot right here. 
1,421 thousandths, and that's what. But from here to there on the panel, it's a thousandth of an inch difference. Oh, we'll get putting the moldings on now. Okay, what I'm getting ready to set up and do right now is to mill all of the stainless steel saw hinges in. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've already done these on the milling machine. They're pretty near perfect. So what I'm going to do is mill all of my saw hinges in before I actually attach the molding to the edge of the table. The reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the milling machine to do it. So these are the pieces that we uh, milled up yesterday, obviously. They're very similar. So these are labeled accordingly as well. So A and A, so I know which side of the table they go on and the table's labeled. Basically, how I'm installing them, using the little dominoes. I'm using the small dominoes because we're putting this on the west system, so not really going to be an issue to have these working as a mechanical fastener. They basically line everything up for me so it goes in, in the right place. So now you can see the dominoes fit relatively tight. That's basically it. So now I put the west system on it, both sides, clean it with acetone first, get all the oil out of the wood, and then clamp it up. And tomorrow we'll be showing how we're going to put the corners in. So the bearings now are going to follow on this and make it perfectly true. in without polishing them, right? They were great before. Our mediocrity rules the world. We try not to do mediocre work here. So of course we're going to polish them before we finish assembly. And that, of course, perfect fit. So I've done is put a little silicone on the screws. Put them in the same way you torque down a head gasket. You do cross them. Works out really nice. So you can see that from the pictures earlier how they were really dull, how much nicer it is this way. And in this case, we're going to line up all of the screws straight up and down. If you'll notice, I went with a slightly smaller screw than what they actually call for, so I could put a nice little oval head in there. These are number 10s, the hinges call for 12s. But because this is an outside piece and it may come apart quite a few times in its lifetime, I like to go with a little smaller screw for the start of its life. And then they can always put the right, right size screws in as the hole gets stripped out over time, which that'll happen from people taking the hinges in and out. But they look nice. Now we're ready for the brackets.
Yeah, he's going great at working on this table. Yep, first the dogs are ready. We'll get over and take care of the hog problem as soon as I'm done. All right, brother. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is putting the studs on the brackets. They're gonna bolt through the box. Get this little jig set up. Cantilever weight. Kind of holds these in place for us really nice. And just unload and load each bracket into the situation. And weld these nuts down to the back side. Gary countersunk them so the heads would go in a little bit. And it'd all be centered. And basically what we're doing is putting the studs on them now. And that'll through bolt this way through the box. That'll be our bracket for the slide to go in to keep everything the same. Let's see I have a straight edge going across the top of it. The reason for that is now we need to put the vertical supports in. It's going to hold the end of the leaves. Up. Obviously there's hinges in there, but they're not going to stop the leaf from folding down too far. So this is where this whole project got complicated. Okay, we have a floating area here. Now normally what you would do, you have a, a dovetail rail that would pull out and support this lift. Now because this is a sealed box and we have hinges on the other side, if I had those rails in there, there'd be no way for them to actually use the interior of the box. They'd basically close off a good percentage of it and it would make it not very watertight here. Now you've seen us working on this stainless. This drops down into the track, the block of stainless sits there like that, and then it has the bolts on the back. So this is gonna work wonderful. Support the table, it's gonna go just like this. This part, keyway at the bottom of it, which allows this to interlock, drops down like so, has to get mounted here. Now if you'll notice, it does have two inch studs on the back of it. Now that I have the table all together, I have to locate the proper holes and drill them through the box and bolt it through to the inside. Problem number two, this is the way it's gonna work and the holes have to be drilled exactly in the right place. It's always a complication with everything, isn't it? Alright, down here is where we're going to find Cooper's hog problem. We hope you liked the video and you won't forget to subscribe. We'll talk to you all later.